and I'm going to show you how to draw a corgi. We're also going to be adding a little bit of color as well. Corgis are near and dear to my heart because I have a corgi. Her name is Beignet, and we are actually going to be using her photo today to draw a corgi. They're kind of funny little creatures. This is a picture of her at the beach. <laughs> they have really short legs and huge barrel chest and um, they're kind of a whimsical little creature and I, I just love her. Today for the supplies you're going to be needing is a pencil, um, a sketchbook. I like to use a sketchbook that has watercolor paper in it. Um, if you don't have watercolor paper, you might not want to add, you want, might want to use colored pencils instead of watercolor paint, but I am using watercolor paper today because I am going to be using a little bit of watercolor paint. Then I am using the monoline pen from the Pigeon Letters, a size three, because you can paint over these, which is awesome. And then also I'm going to be using the Pigeon Letter brushes, a size two and four, but if you just have one of these sizes or really any size will do. So let's get started with our drawing. Whenever I draw something, I like to break it down into shapes. This is going to make it seem much more manageable and it is a great kind of rubric to start when you're starting to draw something. The first thing I wanna do is just make a line down here that will be the sand from the photo, um, just so you can have a general baseline. The photo is curved or slightly um, at a diagonal, so I like to have this line because it'll help me know where to draw. The first thing I'm going to start with is her paws because she's so short. I want to make sure I get the proportions right. And I'm just going to make a little circle here and then a little circle back here for her back paws. So our, our actually our horizon line will come up more like here because we want to show that she's standing on the ground. <laughs> And then back here, I'm going to put her other little paw. And with corgis, their front paws are actually bigger than their back paws. I know it seems really strange, but um, they're actually extremely fast. They're a herding dog. <laughs> so we have our four little paws. And now I want to just make, I'm just making ovals. So a long, elongated oval for her leg. Her legs are really short, I'm not joking, they're probably about six inches long. So this is a very short little oval. Um, same back here, and then for the one back here. Now I want to draw that big old barrel chest, and I'm just gonna draw a circle. And her chest comes over her paws quite a bit. She's also really fluffy, so that has to do with it too. And for her head, I'm going to put like another little circle kind of for her neck. Her neck really blends into her chest, but I want to make sure that her head is high and not like crunched down. Then I'm going to make another circle for her head. From the photo, you can see her head comes out kind of like an S shape here. So we got her head and then just making again those looks like Mickey Mouse ears, but oblong, um, oval shape for those ears. And we're going to make them closer because they're going to come out a bit. So don't worry if they look too far apart. Then what we're going to do is her neck. She doesn't really have a, a long neck. It's really close and connected. I'm going to make an, a long shape again for her whole body. And then just a circle back here for her little booty. <laughs> okay, so we have her general shape down. And now we're going to go ahead and outline it. So I'm going to start at her head over here, come down to her neck, and then she has her back. Her back kind of goes just a little bit under and then comes up where her butt is. Then her front leg... Just gonna make a line for that and have it come down to her foot here. Again, her little back paws are a lot smaller. Her butt is very fluffy. And I can already see that her leg looks a little too long, but we can adjust that in a second. Then her chest, like I said, her chest is pretty huge. 
so her chest goes out and then it comes back in when it gets closer to um, her underbelly. And then again, I can see that this leg is a little too long. I think that my dog Benye has extra short legs. Some corgis have like, they're never like super long, but they are a little bit longer than Benye's. For her face, she has a lot of fur coming out here. And then it comes in and her chest is really furry too. Then we have her little paw here. I know this looks like a mess, you guys, but we're gonna clean it up with a pen. And then just have her paw come out. Those front paws are a little bigger. Now for, and this back paw here. Now for her face, what I like to do is make a line where her eyes are going to go. Her eyes are not exactly halfway down her face. They're a little bit higher. So just make a little line like this. And then her nose comes down about here. I'm just gonna make kind of like a squared off circle. Then we have her little smile, her big smile. And I just come up into a curved shape here. And this will look a little cartoony. It's, it's not meant to look exactly like her, like a realistic version. And then her huge tongue, which we can see extends all the way down to her chest here. <laughs> her tongue is like ridiculously big. Okay, super cute. And her nose, we don't have to worry about the details there just yet. And we're gonna come up here to her eyes. And I'm making that center line of her head. And I can see that there's a pretty good amount of space over here from where the, the edge of her eye is. So I'm gonna come in to a similar space. And I like to do her eyes so you can do a little half circle. And then I put a little curve here because it just makes her eyes look a little more sweet, I guess. And then the same thing over here. And her eyes, um, this is an important thing when you're drawing, is how far apart their eyes are spaced. What you can do is you can take your pointer finger and your thumb. And what I like to do is measure it. So if I am, this, pretend this is the picture right now, I would go like this. I would measure how far apart her eyes are and then how that same space how much space that takes up on the other side of her eye. And that kind of helps you to determine if you're placing her eyes in the right place. Okay, her eyes look a little bit funky right now, but they're gonna look super cute once we add in some more detail. Then for her ears, she has gigantic ears. If you do that little thing and measure, her ears are bigger than half the size of her face, so. That's why we joke that Benye can hear tomorrow and why she constantly barks like nobody's business. I did not know Corgi's barked so much. All right, and then same thing over here. We're gonna do that curved shape, but we're filling it out a little bit more. Remember we just had these ovals and now we're adding a little bit more into the, these areas. Okay, so this gen generally, this looks really good. I'm gonna save the details of her fur for the pen. Um, when I come back here, her they are looking a little long for Benye because her legs are so short. So I think, and also the photo's at an angle, but I'm just gonna make them a little bit shorter because I want them to feel realistic. Okay. I think that's good. And let's put her ball right here because she has a ball in the photo. All right, so we have our basic sketch of a corgi. Now what we're gonna do is I like to use these monoline pens because you can paint over them, which is amazing. And I like to put in all of the details. And then once I have this pen down and it's dry, I will erase the pencil marks. And grab your pen and just start coming in. Since she's really furry, I'm gonna use light strokes. I'm not going to just do strokes that are um, solid. 
but feel free to, you know, do whatever you want. Um, so coming up here in her ear, and they have that little, she has brown on this side of her ear, but the inside of her ear is mostly white. And she has a little dip at the top of her head. Again, making sure that part of their ear that's brown that connects to their head is there. And then for her eyes, I'm, I am going to use more of a solid line when I outline them. And be careful how much of this little line you put because you can start to make the dog look like it has an angry face. <laughs> and I'm just going to make little circles inside for her eyes. And then I'm going to leave a, make a little tiny circle that will leave white because that really wakes up a dog's face when you leave those little white flecks in their eyes. It's like a little highlight. For Beignet, her markings, um, she has white like this and then um, brown all around. Then she has brown under here. So just making those little markings. And then the brown um, comes out right from her eye on both sides. For her little nose, make that dog nose shape and just like little dark, like um, here, I'm gonna show you guys down here. So for the, the nose for the dog, I like to go up and around like that. Uh, I don't know what, like a teardrop almost, but it's like curved because if you ever look at a dog's nose really close up, it's not just a circle, like a hole. They have this inside piece. Um, it's really hard to explain unless you guys are looking at a dog's nose. So if you can look at a dog's nose, <laughs> look at it closely and that'll be helpful. Now I'm going to come in and make her little smile. Her, they're pretty dark here. I'm also gonna do another little half circle right here because it's almost like a dimple for a dog and add that in, makes her look extra friendly. Then that big old tongue coming out. And she's so fluffy here. I'm just going to add in, you can't even see really, I guess you can a little bit where her chin is, but she's so fluffy. So just adding in that extra fluff. And now I'm going to her back and I'm just using these little like back and forth kind of hash, hash marks. And same thing back here with her butt because it's very fluffy. <clears throat> Coming around her leg here. And she has her bottom half of her leg is white. So I'm just going to make a, um, an indication here. So I change colors when I'm painting. And then for her paw, just, you know, that little um, curve to show where her little toes are. Same thing with the one back here. And this, this paw, obviously, because she's standing at an angle, is a little bit shorter. And just re put that line back in there of where, where she's standing. Okay, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Then this paw, you can see there's, or there's white on one side and then there's brown on the other. So just make sure I'm taking that into account when I'm sketching that out. Okay, and that little back paw, putting the little toes in, just really simple little curves. And now we're gonna come down and she's really fluffy right here. So I am really just gonna make like little, really small triangles almost. <laughs> All right, then she has her markings up here. And you guys can make your dog markings for your corgi however you want. You don't have to follow along with hers. Um, okay, so this looks, really good. I'm going to outline my tennis ball. 
And I'm just gonna put those tennis ball lines. So just two C curves. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and erase all the pencil marks. And once we erase the pencil marks, we might find that we wanna add in some other details. I can already see that I want to add in some other details. And there's Benye barking. Ben like I said, now I'm just adding in any more details or if I wanna thicken my lines up anywhere. Um, I think this looks pretty good. And also you can, after you paint, you can also add in more pen marks if you want. I'm gonna do just a couple little lines that show more fur because she is so furry. And the way I do that is I'm just making little lines that are a little bit circular and then alternating between having short lines and really long lines. And I'm gonna do some of that over here because she does have a really fluffy butt. Also, you can kind of see um, some of her like muscle and stuff. Yes, corgis are muscly. <laughs> All right. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of color. We're not going crazy with color today. We're just adding some details. And I just realized I'm actually gonna grab, I have the Pigeon Letters uh, liner. This one is a really small brush because I have some details in here that are gonna require a small brush. So if you have one, I definitely recommend pulling it out. For a Corgi, you're going to need a golden brown Kind of like <laughs> our vet calls her color biscuit so think about a golden brown biscuit it doesn't have to be perfect also if you want to make your corgi pink that's cool too so i'm taking that brown and since we're not this isn't a super heavy watercolor tutorial just add in color where she would have it so um or where a corgi would have it I'm adding in that brown around her face and then leaving the spot that's white. I really like painting in this style where you use the ink and then you paint over it because to me it's really forgiving and it's not, it's just a fun kind of quicker way to paint. Typically my style is extremely layered. All right, so I'm just painting and adding in where she has all her brown fur and where it's white, I'm just leaving it white. We're not gonna put any paint on that part. And if you want, you can make some of those areas more saturated. So maybe up here, I want it to be a little more saturated. Now, just be mindful that you need to make sure that your watercolor paint dries before you go back in with pen because you don't wanna tear up the paper um, because the paper is is more susceptible to being teared when it's wet. That's the extent of her brown. Oh, I'm sorry. She has a cup just like right under her eye. So I'm just going to add that in like so. Now for that pink tongue, I'm using Opera Rose here with a little bit of red. Adding that in and her eyes look really freaky right now, but they're going to look better <laughs> once we paint them. <laughs> that pink tongue and then her ears are kind of pink inside too, but use a really, really light pink. And then for her eyes, I'm just going to mix up a kind of golden brown color. And come in here and I'm gonna paint just around that white. I'm gonna leave that little white space. And um, we're gonna come back in and make this darker because I don't know why her eyes are looking like demonic right now. So we'll fix that, don't worry guys. <laughs> then I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and really water it down for her nose. And then just around her little mouth, the same thing. Add that. And then for the tennis ball, we're gonna make it bright green. 
but we're gonna paint around those two lines because we want those to stay white. And the sand on the bottom, I am going to mix up a sandy color that looks different though from her fur. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it, like a teeny tiny bit. And then just come in here and paint around her. <laughs> Very cute. Except those eyes, we gotta fix those. <laughs> I know what they need. They need black, like pupils in the center. That's gonna help them out a lot. Okay, make sure it's almost dry. I'm going to grab a really dark brown, or you could use black if you want. You really need that fine line. The other way you can do it is you can use your pen, just make sure it's totally dry first. And I'm just going to add in what basically looks like a pupil around her eye and darken them up a little bit. See, it really <laughs> softened them up a bit. It's so funny how really small details like that can matter. Something else you can do if, you're, if you feel like it is you can grab a brownish grayish color and you can add a little bit of paint to where these fur marks are it'll make them look more shadowed if you feel like it but you don't have to maybe under her tongue a little bit to show that there's a shadow and for her little muzzle here I just love the little whisker dots so I'm gonna put in a couple of those little whisker dots here And I'm gonna add just a little more dark shade to her eyes because that brown that I chose really is coming through, the red's coming through and it looks really funky. Okay, and there you have it. We drew a corgi, we covered it in ink, and then we painted it with a little bit of watercolor paint. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and let me know in the comments how your painting turned out. Thanks for watching.